Well, hello again everybody. We're back with another episode of the Interminable Van Heating Project. Well, first job is to finish off disconnecting the old gas heater and capping everything off. Now, I've got myself what I believe to be the correct coupler. But the first job, of course, is to double check that the gas is in fact turned off. So I'm just going to take the whole regulator off the gas bottle to be doubly sure. Right, let's head under the van and see what's what. Well, as you can see, I think we've got the right cup thing now. So, uh, let's undo this and see if we can uh, get it replaced. Now, as always, please remember I am not a trained or qualified mechanic and these are not intended to be tutorial videos. They're just vlogs of us trying to keep our 1990 motorhome on the road for your entertainment. If you have any doubts about working on your own vehicle, you should contact uh, a trained or qualified person to assist you. Ah, we're going to need some plus gas on there, I think. Clean up this old paste on here. On that, do we? Bring that up out the way for now. Now we'll put our new coupling in there. We'll reuse these nuts so we don't have to replace the pipe because if we cut that off, we'd be into replacing whole lengths of gas pipe. There shouldn't be anything wrong with the nuts. Got me some uh, gas jointing paste. Oh man, this is fiddly to open underneath the lab. Okay. Give it a bit of a squadule in the tube. Other olive went up my sleeve. Now, would you believe it? That doesn't fit. Flipping heck. Yeah, that doesn't fit either. That's very weird, isn't it? Hmm. Well, okay, I guess this will go back on for the time being. Well, folks, that's super frustrating. I honestly thought we were going to crack that then, but that gas pipe is just too big to go into that quarter inch BSP fitting. So I'm guessing it must be a metric pipe of some sort after all uh yeah any ideas on that drop me a comment and let me know otherwise i'm just gonna have to keep buying fittings until we hit on the right one which uh yeah it's not very economically sound policy anyway uh let's see if there's something else we can crack on with right so folks well we'll move on to trying to connect up that new diesel heater electrically and you might recall i really wanted it to run off this auxiliary switch here i've taken off uh, this cover and you can see 
Uh, it's a bit of a bird's nest there. We probably could connect into that, but it's a long way from where the heat is going. Now, because this, I guess, is designed to be wired into like a works van or something, I've got a long uh, positive lead to connect to the battery, but only a very short negative lead. So we might have to uh, extend that a bit, but I don't really want to run all the way back to that switch. But that switch, of course, does power the fridge. So I've pulled the fridge out and uh, in the back there, we've got the switch that takes it from 240 to 12 volt. And I've got, of course, these uh, 12 volt connections on the back there. So with that auxiliary switch off, yeah, there's no voltage there. But if I turn it on, there's your battery is probably in need of some charging at the moment, but there is, um, get a good connection yeah there is nearly 12 volt there yeah that leisure battery does need charging doesn't it so i don't think there's any reason we can't pull our electrical power from there well as nice a solution as that seems i'm writing that off as a possibility for the simple reason that the diesel heater comes with a 20 amp fuse and that auxiliary switch is only wired with 10 amp fuses. So I think we'd have a potential problem there. So I'm going to put the fridge back and we'll write off that option. You know what? I think I'm going to take this and run it straight off the vehicle battery because uh, I don't believe they use a great deal of power. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be probably the easiest option. We can use that short earth wire just against one of the chassis rails underneath so i need to cut myself uh, another hole through here so i can get that cable through underneath the van right well because i can't get any of the uh, plugs off this wiring loom easily i'm going to take this plate off and cut a slit up so i can slide the wires through and then pop the plate back on again i think that'll work So coming out the bottom of this hole, we've got the um, earth lead, we've got the uh, power supply line, and we've also got the wire which is connected to the connector to the pump, because that, I think, has got to find its way into the gas locker somewhere. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small tank in the gas locker. And I'm going to do that just because of ease of getting it done, because I am running short of time now to get this done before we need to go on some trips. And uh, there was a lot of dissension over connecting it to the fuel line. I still think that would be okay. I've got some uh, non-return valves uh, to make the connections. And uh, I may well still do that in the future. But I just need to get it working in the meantime. And I think a tank in the gas locker is going to be the quickest and easiest solution. Right, let's drop this plate in and see how it looks. Well, folks, I, I had a look under the van and uh, there's nowhere near enough wire to get back to the battery connections. I did jump in the car and head over to Halfords and uh, believe it or not, Halfords do not sell wire off the reel. They've only got like fancy harness things for wiring in speakers and amplifiers and stuff. So uh, that was an hour or so wasted. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what to do uh, about connecting this up uh, i could just go in and order some more wire and we could make up something to take back to the battery and that might be what we have to do but uh, let's have another look under the van first right well i've had a look about under the van and i think i might have identified a solution so here are the positive and negatives coming out from the leisure battery and they disappear into this uh, slam panel here. So they re-emerge from it here and go into this connector here and from there they go down and you might just be able to make out just there is the end of some flexible ducting. 
that at least the um, red cable goes into. Now some of the other cables come out to these relays and I think these are the relays for the fridge I think. And this brown and cream appears to be the earth or more accurately the negative wire of the habitation circuit. So into the end of that ducting does disappear a brown and cream wire which I think will be the negative but we also have two red wires one of which comes straight from the leisure battery and one of which comes from those relays so if i can cut open that ducting as it passes by the diesel heater i might be able to connect into an earth and a positive but i need it to be the right positive <laughs> and since they're both red that's going to be difficult well, I tell you what, I'll expose a little bit of that wiring by cutting back some of this um, conduit. And uh, what I'm going to do to check, I've turned off the um, zig panel inside and I'm just going to nick the wires, just take a little bit of insulation off that, what I think is the negative wire, and one of those positive wires. And we'll just check and see if we have 12 volts because the fridge is off as well so there you go look we're getting a uh, 12 volt there uh, across those two wires so i think that's our feed identified and it's not too far away so i can cut into those and pick up the 12 volt what a relief eh so what i have just done just to verify that that is indeed from the leisure battery is just to disconnect the leisure battery and check again i'm not getting any voltage at all there so yeah, that is definitely 12 volts off the leisure battery. Right, let's make this connection then. So uh, crimped terminals that ain't going to work on this. I have to see if I can find some chocolate block connectors. Well, would you believe it? I've had a hunt everywhere and I can't find any electrical connector blocks. So I uh, popped up the garage. They had none either. So I'm not going to go to Halfords again. I have to pick some up in the week. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that diesel heater off again. And I'm going to connect up the exhaust and the inlet and bits and pieces because I think that'd be quite difficult to do once the electrical connections are made. Well, the first thing to do I think is to bolt this turret plate down to the heater. And uh, there must be some nuts in this uh, giant bag of all manner of fixings that I've been issued with. Um, but of course there's no instructions so I'll just have to guess which ones are the right ones. Well, the next thing is probably to connect up the exhaust, but that does beg the question, which one of these is the exhaust? Because we have, again, no instructions. So uh, I'm gonna have to have a bit of a Google on that. Okay, so from my Googling, I believe that one is the exhaust. And that does indeed make sense because the, the inlet is there, the outlet is there. So I guess that's where the combustion occurs. Who knows, anyway. I believe that one's the exhaust. Get it the wrong way around, we'll probably melt something. So that has to mean the other one is the air intake.
Right, next I guess is the fuel line. Now quite a few people have mentioned about replacing the fuel line that this kit comes with with a better quality fuel line. And uh, yeah, I hear you, but I haven't <laughs> actually managed to get any better quality fuel line. So we go with the fuel line that we've got and that may well end up getting replaced in the future if there's a problem. We're not going to use much of it because we are keeping the tank pretty close to where the heat is going. Okay, well, the only thing I'd say about these clips that come with the fuel line is that, yeah, they are a bit big. Uh, they do nip up eventually, but uh, it takes some doing, I can tell you. Right, now I'm going to seal that plate down to the plywood uh, plate with some heat resistant sealant. Right, next I'm going to mount the silencer box on the end of the exhaust there. And as noted by many people, that little drain hole, you can just see on the bottom there, has to face downwards. Now the bracket for the diesel here has got these uh, self-drilling sort of jack point screws on it. So I'm hoping I can use them to fix up to the aluminium trim around the edge of the gas locker. Well, now it's a matter of putting this uh, air intake on there and uh, fixing that somewhere. Uh, I fix that sort of central to the middle of the van, well away from the exhaust. Although none of this, of course, finds its way into the actual van itself. Right, next thing is to mount the pump and uh, I've had to Google to see which way around the pump goes. Because I know it's got to be mounted at sort of 18 to 30 degrees angle, I think, is the thing. And pushing upwards. So I believe the flow is from the bottom up if it's mounted that way, hopefully, if I've got my uh, Googling correct. sun's starting to go down it's starting to get quite cold so i think that's probably about all we get done on the van tonight gonna have something to eat and then i've got some other little jobs i have got to get done in the garage as well so we'll see you next time for another heater <laughs> install update video hopefully we we may even get it done next time well
the installation done anyway. I need to build a little cabinet around it and stuff as well, don't I? So, uh, yeah, we're not going to get it completely finished next time. But you never know, we might get some heat coming out of it. What do you reckon, Mr Ginge? Is it time for dinner? Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Give the like button a press. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more.